Section 2.5 is sets and compound inequalities. Uh, we're going to be working with our inequality that contains and first, and it's a value is a solution of a compound inequality containing and if it is a solution of both. Well, basically, it, when we graph our two different separate inequalities, it's going to be where they overlap. It's going to be our solution. So the first thing they ask us to do is to graph some very basic inequalities. And we remember in number one, we're going to do x is less than one. I'm going to graph that on the first line. x is less than one. We said if it's less than, I mean if it's just less than, it's a parenthesis. And we shade to the left with this one. So that's x is less than one. On the next graph, the second one, we're going to do x is greater than negative three. So we go to negative 3, and then we go greater. And greater is going to be this way. Okay, so now we want to know the and, our solution, which is just going to be our bottom portion, is where do these two graphs overlap? If I put them right on top of each other, the overlapping portion occur, occurs from here to here. So our solution is going to be just to describe our overlapping region. So as I read left to right, when I give interval notation, the very first thing I come to is a parenthesis at negative 3, and then it ends at a parenthesis at positive 1. So this is interval notation for the solution set. All right, number 2, we're going to graph x is less than or equal to negative 3 on this top line. So because of this equal to bar, it's going to be a bracket. And it's going to be less than. So we shade to the left. It's this way. And then the next one we're going to graph is going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So we go to negative 2. And it's going to be greater than, so it's this way. All right, my bottom graph, which is just my solution, says where do these two overlap? Okay, there's a gap right here. These two graphs do not overlap one another. Therefore, the answer is just no solution. If they do not overlap, we're going to have no solution. All right, let's move to number three. We're going to graph our first inequality. X is less than negative one. It's a parenthesis on negative one. Less than. Okay, and then we're going to graph our second inequality. X is less than one. So go to positive one, and it's less than positive one. Okay, and now our solution to this, to the and inequality, says where do these two overlap? They overlap starting from negative 1 and on to the left. So the overlapping region, if I was to squish them on top of each other, it's going to be there. And I need to describe this in interval notation. So as I'm reading left to right, the first thing I come to is an arrow to the left, which is represented with the negative infinity. And then I'll go all the way down, and it stops at negative 1 with the parenthesis. So this is interval notation for that inequality. We're going to be doing the same concept, but first they're going to ask us to solve these inequalities first. So we want to solve for x and get x by itself. So subtract 1. Then I'm going to have x is greater than or equal to 6. And then over here on this other one, I want to solve for x. And x is greater than or equal to 2. So I have my two inequalities. I'm just going to kind of quickly sketch me my graph. So I have a 2 and a 6. Okay, I'm going to put me a dotted line. 2 comes before 6 on the number line. So 2 is here and 6 is here. 
I'm going to graph x is greater than or equal to 6 on this top bar. So if it's greater than 6, it's a bracket because of the equal to bar, and it's greater than. So that's my first inequality. I have x is greater than or equal to 2. I'm going to put it on the second one. So it's going to be here and greater than. And now my and, it is an and problem. Since it's and, I want to know where do these two graphs, graphs overlap. If I put them right on top of each other, the overlapping portion occurs from 6 on to infinity. So if I describe that, they want me to put my answer in interval notation. As you come across this bottom graph, which is our solution graph, we read left to right. The first thing we come to is a bracket 6. And the last thing we finish at is an arrow to the right, which means a positive infinity. So here's our interval notation. All right, same thing on number 5. Let's solve it for x first of all. Subtract 2. Divide both sides by 4. And x is less than or equal to negative 3. Over here on the right-hand side, my second equation, I'm just going to solve for x, and I have x is less than or equal to 0. Okay, so once I have my two inequalities, I'm going to quick sketch this. I have a 0 and a negative 3. Well, negative 3 comes before 0 on the number line, so I need to make sure these two bottom numbers are in order according to the number line. And then... It doesn't matter which one I graph first, if I choose to graph this one on the top line or if I choose to graph this one. As long as you graph both of them, it doesn't matter which order. So I'm going to do um, x is less than or equal to negative 3 on this top one, which is a bracket. The bracket comes because of that equal to bar. Shade it this way. And then I'm going to do x is less than or equal to 0. Say bracket on 0, less than. And my bottom graph is going to be my and graph, which means if I smash those two down together, where do they overlap? Okay, where do these two overlap? They overlap from here to here. So as I read interval notation left to right, the first thing I come to is an arrow to the left, described by negative infinity. And it stops at negative 3 with a bracket. Okay, number 6 is a compound inequality as well. If it's all combined like that, it's an assumed and problem. We still want to solve it for x, but we're going to do whatever you do to this side. You're going to do to this side and to this side. We're going to do it to all, por all parts of the inequality. So then I'm going to have 11 is less than x, which is less than 17. Now, that that's a correct solution, but I need to break that apart so I can graph it. This is one of my values, which is x is greater than, mouth is open to the x, mouth is open to the x, x is greater than or equal to, greater than 11, and x is less than 17. So those are the two I'm going to graph when I pull them apart. So I have an 11 and I have a 17. Put them in order according to the number line. I have x is greater than 11. So that's a parenthesis shading to my right, and I have x is less than 17, and is where do these two overlap, and they overlap in the middle from 11 to 17, so interval notation as I read left to right is going to be parenthesis 11, parenthesis, uh, comma 17, 11, comma 17.